No historical place name quite sends shivers down the spine like Atlantis. The fabled city that sunk to the bottom of the Mediterranean has intrigued scholars, academics, and even conspiracy theorists for hundreds of years. But is there more to the story of Atlantis than meets the eye? So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three stories about the underwater world to see if we can piece together the Atlantis mystery. The Atlantis Alloy Off the coast of Sicily, multiple sites of shipwrecks have nestled some of the most incredible archaeological finds in recent years. Ingots coloured in the most dazzling gold colour were found along the seabed at the site of a crash from nearly 2,600 years ago. Some believe that these ingots may be made from the same precious materials described to belong in abundance across the mythical island of Atlantis. In 2015, divers discovered a total of 39 ingots among a Sicilian shipwreck. These were composed of copper, zinc and charcoal, and all of them had a shiny, brassy finish. Some believe that this discovery was evidence of the existence of orichalcum. In the more recent discovery in 2017, with 47 of the same ingots, had scientists pondering the same thing. This more recent shipwreck was discovered in the proximity of two other wrecks, roughly a thousand feet off the coast of Sicily. Believed to have been submerged during a storm, the ships were found beneath roughly 10 feet of water. In Plato's Critias dialogue, he describes the rarity of this ingot stating that the only more precious material was gold. Despite his writings, researchers now know that this aura calcum is not as rare as the ancient Greek philosopher might have believed. The history and existence of aura calcum has been in question for centuries. The very first historical mention of aura calcum is in the 7th century BC by an ancient Greek poet. Still, despite historical literature, no sizable quantity of orichalcum was found until the 2015 discovery. Speaking of the discovery, an assistant to Sicily's superintendent of the seas said, Within the waters, there are a priceless mine of archaeological finds. Plato said that orichalcum was abundant in the opulence of Atlantis, specifically decorating the entirety of Poseidon's temple. He stated that, The outermost wall was coated with brass, the second with tin, and the third, which was the wall of citadel, flashed with the bright red light of orichalcum. The discovery of the rare alloy is not too surprising. The city was an affluent place during ancient Greece. Experts believe that the orichalcum ingots that were recently discovered would have been the works of craftsmen and workshops in order to be turned into valuable and fashionable goods. Could this discovery suggest there was more to the Atlantis story than just the myth? Were these ingots part of an ancient material that Atlantis used in abundance? A Hidden World When Plato described that Atlantis was banished beneath the waves by the gods, many took the event as pure fiction, mythological poetry. But what if we said that sinking continents is a real thing, and more than just ancient fiction? Recent research has highlighted a number of sunken and lost continents in Europe. They manage to shape a massive part of human history. In September 2019, a Dutch geologist helped to publish a paper of research surrounding the lost continent. By studying geological features across the Mediterranean Sea, the team of researchers were able to piece together the size of a long-forgotten continent that has been missing for millions of years. The team of researchers stated, It's enormous about the size and rough shape of Greenland. But Greater Adria's plight was not as simple as what Plato described befell on Atlantis. Instead of sinking beneath the waves, Greater Adria was crushed between what is now southern Europe and the ancient continent now rests completely under the surface. Research also shows that the story is by far from unique. In fact, research surrounding the Earth's mantle shows evidence of many lost continents, with many of Earth's early life being lost as well. It's a strange coincidence of fate. Plato stood above the ground that submerged what many might call the real Atlantis, the very story that he invented. 
perhaps stories and tales of lost cities, began from the sinking of lost continents, passed down information sculpting what would become folklore and mythology. The crust and debris left by Greater Adria was coincidentally also composed to form marble across the Mediterranean and local regions. The ancient Greeks and Romans used this in abundance to decorate and construct their temples. But what if we told you that there's a lost continent that was lost to sea? While the details may not perfectly align with Plato's description of Atlantis, the formation known as Zealandia seemed to have suffered a similar fate to the mythological city. While New Zealand might be seen as a small island lying in the shadow of its big cousin Australia, research actually suggests that New Zealand is much more than an island, but belongs to a large geographical structure, Earth's so-called eighth continent. In 2017, research conducted by Nick Mortimer of GNS Science, a geological research company, and Rupert Sutherland of Victoria University Wellington, found that by combing ocean floor data surrounding New Zealand with measurements of surface gravity and analysis of seafloor samples, New Zealand is much more than meets the eye. In fact, the total Zealandia measured to be about two-thirds the size of Australia. Zealandia shows how the continents have altered and changed over millions of years. During the time when dinosaurs walked the Earth, Zealandia was part of the supercontinent Gondwana. Then it got separated 85 to 100 million years ago. It got stretched and thinned, resulting in a lower elevation, and it was also affected by the development of the Pacific Ring of Fire, a zone of volcanic activity that rims the Pacific Ocean, stated Sutherland. Much like Atlantis, Zealandia inevitably sank beneath the waves. Today, the only remaining part of Zealandia that exists above water are the islands of New Zealand and New Caledonia. With this discovery, perhaps the story of Atlantis is a little more realistic than we first thought. Atlantis would be at least 11,500 years old. The ancient nature of Plato's iconic text, Discussing Atlantis, means that many finer details, be them historical or scientific, have been lost to time. Accuracy in reporting isn't always precise when discussing ancient texts. They're often marked with accidental or sometimes intentional mistakes in historical fact. But what if we were to treat the Atlantis myth as fact? Could a kind of advanced super city, like that described by Plato, truly exist? In 2019, an open-source research paper discusses the historical accuracy behind the idea of Atlantis, titled Atlantis, A Grain of Truth Behind the Fiction. It goes into detail on how Atlantis, or at least the idea of Atlantis, may have come about, discussing how the Atlantean temple likely derived from natural events that were expanded upon over time and flourished with extra detail. Specifically saying, Plato's tale might contain references to actual events, even though artfully retouched. The paper goes on to discuss how the Egyptians, the go-to ancient civilization for the time when Plato was writing, also had similar tales of lost civilizations. Despite the ancient Egyptians being seen as one of the oldest and most well-established civilizations today, they had various myths and folklores to explain how gods had come from lost lands and transformed their way of living with introductions of technologies and agriculture. This could mean that Atlantis, as written by Plato, could be referring to the same place that Egypt's founders came from. Looking at archaeological and geological evidence, the research paper suggests the myth of Atlantis was likely formed by actual geological events, but was adopted, passed down and shaped into what we know today as Atlantis. Besides the unexpected rise in temperature resulting in an increase in sea level, the period was also marked by the birth of agriculture and the appearance of totally new technologies in diverse Near Eastern locations. All of these point to the theory that actual events during this period of history eventually became a way of explaining the world through myths and stories, eventually being utilised by Plato to popularise his beliefs. The memory of these events would have been passed down through the myth of the foundation of Egypt, and through this to Greek culture, enabling Plato to overemphasize the antiquity of his noble ancestors, while embellishing the characteristics of the invaders. 
While there's no evidence besides that found in the Near East, the research paper goes on to argue that the possible discovery of obsidian submerged in the flooded islands in the Strait of Sicily suggests that there was certainly a technological advancement made around the supposed time of Atlantis's existence, again helping to form the idea of an advanced ancient society. So what do you make of these mysteries and discoveries surrounding Atlantis? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below, and help us by growing this community whilst working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.